Welcome to another EOSIO Top 5 Moments of the Week. Now, please keep in mind, none of this is financial advice, and you are strongly advised to do your own research. As always, this is brought to you by the team at Helios, myself, Chris Barnes. And I'm Waxer. And before we start, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We put out this content every week, and we'd love to have you here next week and the following weeks. Okay, so starting with number five, we have Shintai, who have received their Capital Market Services License from the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Yeah, this is a really significant milestone that has been a long time coming for those who have been following Chex, which is the token for Shintai, and uh, just the, what they're trying to do with tokenizing real world assets. Uh, this is basically what allows Shintai to issue securities and units in a collective investment scheme in a compliant and regulated manner. So again, huge steps towards making tokenization of real world assets and fractional ownership a reality. Great work, guys, and looking forward to what else comes from this opportunity to now actually get to work doing what your platform is set out to do. And for number four, the Recover Plus initiative portal is now live. Yeah, this is another ENF initiative along with the many others we've seen from the group. And what this does is it allows for projects on EOS to enroll and then have a proper channel to reach the top 21 BPs in the event of a major hack in which they need the BP support. Uh, individuals and victims of phishing attacks or losing your private keys are not really appropriate for this particular uh, platform. This is meant for larger projects with larger TVL as a means of hack prevention or resolution. So this has come up in the past with previous hacks and the question of how does a regular non-connected um, project have access to the top 21 BPs so that they can actually have an account frozen or some sort of uh, intervention to prevent lost funds. This again is a potentially contentious aspect of the EOS and all EOS IO blockchains where immutability is more of a sliding scale and with 15 of 21 of the top 21 block producers agreeing to do something they can actually change what otherwise would be an immutable ledger uh, so again contentious whether this is good or bad I personally think it's good this is a this is a benefit to EOS where large hacks can be recovered without having to fork the chain like we've seen say with the Ethereum DAO hack many years ago for number three origin the company behind the UX network have assumed the ongoing development, the substantial restructuring and multi-chain expansion of the bigger protocol. And that's right. So Vigor is a crypto lending and underwriting platform with integrated fee token called VIG algorithmic stablecoin called Vigor. This is known to many of us in the EOS ecosystem. It's been around for a while, very much like a DAO type of creation. Many individuals within the EOS ecosystem came together to build this. It has struggled to gain TVL and adoption and Origin intends to help with that. Origins Vigor 2.0 will have contracts built on the UX network and will utilize their trustless IBC or inter-blockchain communication to allow for transfers between EOSIO blockchains and eventually even non-EOSIO platforms. So the UX network, as we have been following along here, is coming out soon with their own trustless IBC bridge amongst EOSIO. Plus, they actually have this bridge that I do believe works with Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. So we're looking forward to that coming along with UX's AMM, Automated Market Maker, to really launch that platform which then will then also launch and incorporate Vigor, the VIG and Vigor stable token. So great to see this. This is a great move from the Origin team and uh, great to see that Vigor is a project that hasn't received a lot of attention, finally getting some more attention. And for number two, so the Telos Spark Hackathon winners were announced and the winner of 100k Telos tokens was Cluist. Yeah, Clues, Clues, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one, but so this is a, a metaverse play where basically it allows users to play, share, and monetize interactive experiences using proven cutting edge, augmented reality, and geolocation technologies. They have an app, they have an app already available on iOS and Android, and basically adventurers in this metaverse can open chess, fight enemies, play adventures, all while earning the Clue tokens and tradable NFTs. In addition, you can create characters, vehicles, and art galleries, and even your own marketplace. Great work uh, from the Telos team. It's nice to see the hackathon have so many. They had over 150 individual uh, participants with over 30 projects, and they narrowed it down to this Metaverse Clues project as the big winner of 100,000 Telos, which is roughly $100,000, depending on the price of Telos at any particular time. And for number one, our top ESIO moment of this week is that the EOS EVM, called Trust EVM, had their Twitter Spaces launch AMA event. 
Yeah, this is a really successful event. It goes to show the power of Twitter Spaces, which has been coming up lots in the EOS community as a sort of a vehicle that we should be using more often. And so here they had nearly 400 participants with English and Chinese translations. So Trust EVM, to those who don't know, will have a gas fee. So this means for EOS users who are familiar with the power up in CPU issues, those will be removed. EOS token holders will also be shareholders in Trust EVM, which is a point that Yves LaRose from the EOS Network Foundation is really trying to push across to people that the EOS token holders will in fact receive a benefit from the Trust EVM and the EVM token that it's tied to. There will be synergies that, so during the call, synergies were talked about between the Yield Plus Working Group as another ENF initiative that will help increase the TVL or total value locked on the Trust EVM network. Uh, so Matias from EOS Argentina and the EVM plus technical lead confirmed that, will be, that there will be deterministic gas billing, EVM compatibility at the instruction level and full RPC compatibility. After uh, a sort of more like a speech-like section of this AMA, there actually was the AMA part where you get to ask some questions. So the series of questions that were asked, uh, some, some of them were the speed of the EOS network, how uh, the community can play along in terms of a cooperation with uh, the overarching plan. What is the competitive advantage that EOS EVM will have? What is the funding plan of the ENF? What does 0.5 second block time allow for? And what exactly is RPC compatibility? Great question. And also, how does the EOS EVM work with the Telos EVM in terms of collaborations? So I'm not going to give away the answers to those questions because they were provided. I definitely encourage you to check out the written transcript, or if you're an English speaker, which you probably are if you're watching this, there was a truncated version of that AMA, which is only 53 minutes long, that has all of the Chinese and the translation bits cut out. So you can watch that. We'll also link that below for you. So definitely, if you're following along, this is a big advancement uh, for EOS having EVM. It brings in all the, the thousands of Solidity developers plus liquidity, and we've seen what it's done for Telos, another great EOS IO chain, and obviously those in EOS are hoping it'll bring the same sort of good fortune to the EOS. And that concludes this week's top five. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, make sure to check out our top 10 quarter one review moments of the Q1. Yeah, we're bringing that out soon. And uh, please subscribe, follow us along. We're uh, doing this every week, bringing you all the action and top stuff coming from EOSIO.